Rick and Morty, Forgetting Sarek, Mort Shall, Episode 9, Season 5. Summary, mm -hmm. review coming at you live and direct. Also, shout out Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Fucking great movie. Well, so that's a movie about like a relationship breakup, getting over a breakup, which is very topical mm. to what this episode is about. It is? Well, Morty and Rick are like, they have their own oh, pseudo truth. breakup. Sorry, I just instantly thought of like, Who's Rick fucking? But yeah, it's Morty. But he's not fucking Morty. It's More not in this timeline anyways. No, it's not It's not sexual, but it's almost like it's a relationship, you know? Yeah. And they have a, a breakup of sorts and a rebound, which we'll talk about. So here we see there's like a wafer galaxy. And if you look, there's like the boom mic, like it's being recorded. The boom oh, mic is nice. even like a little wafer as well. Nice. And, and the camera is made out of fucking, and the camera is made out of biscuits too. Good eye. <laughs> All these little details. The candy wrapping thing. Oh, oh man. man. That's, that's so good. Really, really cool detail in just the very first shot. And uh, we see Morty come to this galaxy and this is Cookie Frito. You can see his long list of all these people that from different galaxies, which he has on the go because he's probably constantly saving them. And it just seems like it's all just a chore for him. He doesn't have time to have a to have a full on conversation to have dinner with him like he doesn't he just doesn't have time for it he's just he's got the point of Rick where he's just too busy to he's, enjoy it he's just cleaning up after Rick's mess here yeah but he does it because he's a good person like at the end of the day like he knows that he has the tools and powers to do this so he'll do it because no one else does right and, and that's the basis of their relationship Rick flew his spaceship into this wall we have a lava monster which is actually have you seen Moana the movie yeah, I have. Great movie. So if you remember, there's a lava monster similar to this. Yeah. I, I th it seems like a parody. I heard it was a parody for that mo <laughs> that movie. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. <laughs> kind of looks like Ragnaros as well from the, the Blizzard Thor. world. Oh. Ooh, that was but yeah, look at these people. <laughs> it's they so creative. Like, yeah. Little palm trees on the head. The little, the little, little shirts. But yeah, he doesn't get to uh, enjoy it as well. But he's he's back. Well, I guess I guess the reason he's not enjoying it's because he's doing it behind Rick's back, and he knows he has a time limit before Rick gets back. So I guess that's also what it comes down to, right? And, <laughs> and it's he just... uses Mountain Dew to fill it back up because it's the same color. And is there something like kids do when like they steal their parents' alcohol or something? Yeah, like, they, ref you... they steal vodka, they fill it back up with water, or fill whiskey back up with ginger beer. And to be fair, it looks exactly the same, pretty much. So they don't notice most of the time until they drink it. I think <laughs> this might be a little bit of a foreshadowing. So I, I watched a video by a great channel. Um, I can't I'm forgetting the name of, and, and this kid is doing a great job reviewing and finding Easter eggs in this um in these vi in these shows. This potentially foreshadowing evil Morty hacking Rick's portal gun with altered portal fluid. Mm. Potentially a bit of foreshadowing there, which I didn't pick up on. Mm. Very nice pickup. And then, yeah, he gets a little bit of the stuff in his hand. And then there's a guy that he can see through it. It actually took me a long time to connect that that guy had a portal on him as well. I thought this was just like a portal to like some random dimension. Oh, really? I didn't, I, I didn't think that it was like, like it had happened to someone else. That didn't like click with my mind until I realized. And we see this new character here, which is great. Garbage oh, Goober. Yes. Garbage Goober. What an absolute... Like, look at him. Mm, trash, trash, trash. I love trash. Yum, yum, trash. <laughs> and it's the same voice as the other character. I can't remember the, the name. It's, but... it's the Poopy Buttle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like how they use his voice. Yeah, it's such a good voice. Of course you want to keep using it. It just suits that sort of dopey, dumb... I don't know. It's a great voice. And then we see a classic like relationship argument here, right? Someone does something, yeah. they go behind someone's back, they lie, they argue. Which is just Morty picking up Rick's habits, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the character development this season of uh, all the main characters. There actually hasn't been too much Beth, Jerry, or... or a summer. I mean, they obviously have their shining moments in this this season, but but not recently. Yeah, but that's good. But I, I like that because at the start of the season, it was away from the Rick and Morty adventures, and now it kind of it finishing was. more to that. 
No, I yeah, I enjoyed it. And also, I love this wheel. Like, you pause it, look, Jerry, spin again. So let's all the things that are better than Morty. Let's dissect this. Obviously, Jerry, no, not I'm happening. Not sidekick. Kyle, Kyle do you remember Kyle? No, who was Kyle? So, Mr. Nimbus referenced as Rick's old sidekick that died. Oh, Kyle. So, another Kyle. Probably just a clone. A bag of meat. I kind of wanted to see a bag of meat. Sentient shit. <laughs> so, shit that's sentient. Gene with donkey brains. I don't know who Gene is. Gene, I think, is their neighbor. The one that talked to the uh, the artificial intelligence of, of, of uh, his garage. Garbage Goober, half of Paul Giamatti, and of course, two crows. Now, when I saw this wheel, the first thing that came to my mind was, fuck, I would love to see Rick have two crows as a sidekick. No fucking Oh, really? Uh, the first thing I thought was like, I fucking want to see two crows as a sidekick. That's what, that's what I thought. Well, so, you got it. I fucking got it, bro. I was so happy. I'm like, fuck yeah. I just think it's a really cool concept. And so, you know, pointing out the obvious of what all the viewers are thinking, obviously this has not been a healthy relationship for five seasons. Mm -hmm. And you see, Morty's desperate here. He's desperate for some companionship and such a healthy relationship in his life. Mm. <laughs> Boom. Caught two crows. Like Pokemon. And so what's happening here is he's kind of giving them these pellets which are supposed to be contains all of the memories and stories and adventures that, that Morty would have. Yeah, so that they can learn what job it is they'll have to do. Just like basically training them quick, quicker than you'd normally train them. And also that was, that's really cool what the crows did. <laughs> I think this is symbolic of their relationship. Like Rick has always had Morty on a string. Like, yeah. Morty's never really been free to really do what he wants to do. Mm. And if he ever is free to do it, then Rick just makes him feel like shit because Morty will do something that, you know, is considered wrong or he fucked up because it's just something that he wasn't told or some dumb... You know you know how many times Morty fucks up? It's like, why did you do that, Morty? He's like, well, I didn't think this outrageous thing would happen. <laughs> right, it's like completely unknown thing to Morty. Yeah. But so obvious to Rick. he does have the freedom... Yeah, exactly. Obvious to Rick. The smartest motherfucker. I guess now, because Morty feels like he has this portal on his hand forever, he has to, uh, you know, he feels a connection to this dude. Yeah, a he mutual connection of someone who's ro being wronged by Rick. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I like this character. I think he's cool. <laughs> well, he definitely changes over the episode. You, you definitely get one impression of him and then it turns. I Oh, man, as soon as I saw him in a, a mental ward, I was just like, he's either going to be really fucking evil or really good, but like Rick just made him fucked. <laughs> well, clearly the first one happened. Yeah, he becomes evil. What is evil? More so than Rick. Classic line, classic quote of this episode. The more you sweat, the saltier your cheeks. <laughs> So that's it. They become the Porter Boys. Morty is looking for acceptance in a like that's what you do when you break up with somebody. There's a rebound, and Morty is looking yeah. for some type of acceptance and connection. Again, this is representative of the human experience where you look yeah. for, uh, uh, you crave this. Uh, I don't know what is Morty craving. He just well, he's plant like had most of his life or well, his uh, I guess teenagehood just being with Rick. And being like, you know, going on adventures with them. So he just craves someone else to do that with. So this fills that point. And it's real. I really like the way that they've used the portals, like by putting stuff through it. Like it's super creative. Absolutely. And yeah, pouring the fucking old fucking shit <laughs> into the portal. Or it's like a vomit tray. Yeah, it's like vomit and piss, I'd say. Well, that's just obviously the best combination to uh, thwart your enemies. <laughs> In through his knee and into into their mouth. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. The portal boys, yeah. Siri has some uh, a feeling of acceptance now. 
Hmm. And then on the other side, Rick has his own version of that. Rick's version of this guy, I think, uh, is Crows. Mm -hmm. Both two rebounding. Two, two, exactly two. Also, <laughs> this bit where they just see the people. I love when the Crows is like, oh, you've got a moral, you've got a moral compass. You get extra points for that. So Rick obviously was just like, didn't yeah. want to. But then once he realized the Crows went through, he's like, oh, yeah, I should be doing this. Like he needs people to remind him what good decisions are, I feel. Or what the empathetic decision. Well, that's the big kind of lesson of this episode is the empathy lesson yeah definitely but that we're not there entirely actually that's something rick rejected by getting rid of the crows rick didn't want to confront this idea of empathy and compassion and you know he's like Fuck, man get this i don't want this also i didn't see this coming at all i didn't think that the planet which he just happened to be near had crow overlords and it, oh, this is very reminiscent of um have you seen uh, the Dark Crystal? No, but so these, are like, no. these are like Skeksis. So this is like a play on the Dark Crystal. Because the guy that voices the the crow, I'm pretty sure it's the same guy that voices the Skeksis from Dark Crystal. Okay, this is a movie? Uh, it's a TV series. Okay. It's, it is a movie. It started off as a movie and it became a TV series. It's actually a really good TV series. I highly recommend it. It's all puppetry. So lots and lots of work. I don't get this moment. The, the the trained are untrained. We are untrained. The old training is complete because no training was needed. And the Rick has this moment of realization. I don't really get what he got. I mean, I guess you can take it however you want. I just take it as like the crows don't need to be trained because they were already trained to begin with. Like they already had everything they needed. So I think Rick's kind of going through this thing of, oh, maybe... Maybe I didn't, like, maybe he just, that's why he hangs with the crows, I feel, because the crows already have what they want, and he wants that as well. So I think that's kind of why he sticks with them. And on the other end, Morty still has on this the other loyalty <laughs> to Rick, and it's being yeah. undermined by, the, is his name Nick? I can't remember his name, but I just love when he starts breaking shit. Morty's like, oh, no, because he's so used to, like, you know, not doing stuff that Rick doesn't like. And then when he sees that someone else is doing it, he's like, fuck, I actually really want to do that as well. And then he just joins in. And Jerry joins them for one second and then fucks up. Classic Jerry. Classic. It comes a puddle. Oh, I love it. It's so good. I only I, I had to watch this episode back just again. And, and I didn't catch this moment of um him, him pissing on the, on the board. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> fuck you. So I'm not sure what's supposed to be too different about that other portal gun. I don't know if they <sighs> played into that. Mm. Now the crow is giving me a lift home. But because these crows are so smart, like they're pretty much on the same level as Rick, they immediately deduct what Rick did to get these crows. Now these crows are like, you know, questioning everything. Mm -hmm. Which is rare. Because yeah, Rick exactly can usually like talk him way out will talk his way out of it. Yeah, but they're just so smart that they can just look at it and completely know what what, what happened. <laughs> and the garbage goober tried to change it. <laughs> uh, look at his face. He's so sad he got caught. He just wants to be a sidekick. He just wants to be more than a, a garbage eater. Trash, trash. I love trash. Yum, yum, yum. So they're on a, they're on their own adventure here. Like it's like this guy's yeah. Morty's just. Doing the same thing, just with a different person in what he supposedly thought would be a healthier way and healthier relationship. Which he soon realizes it's not. He starts to realize that Rick wasn't as terrible as like, obviously he's done a lot of terrible things, but I think by hanging out with this person, he, he begins to realize just how imperfect Rick is, but not to a degree where it's crossing a line a lot of the time. It does cross a line, though, a lot of the time, doesn't it? He does a lot of the time, but he doesn't do it for evil purposes, I feel like. I feel like when Rick makes a decision that crosses a there's line... There's like logic, like, rationale. There's logic behind it. There's benefit. Whereas this guy does stuff without any logic, really. He's just killing for the sake of killing. And right. Rick never really does that. Or if he... I guess maybe he does sometimes. I feel like he only kills for the sake of killing when he knows that like maybe it has no consequence or maybe it has no meaning. Or maybe he's drunk as fuck. <laughs> But it's interesting because that's kind of like a relationship. Like, 
you rebound with somebody or you take a break from so, to be, being or dating somebody. And sometimes people realize that, man, what I had was so good. You don't realize mm. what you have until you go see another person or, or have a break from a person. And that perspective gives you, oh, mm. what he realized, what he had. So, and this is it. Mm. And now he's acknowledging it. Yep. But you know what? It, it, I think everyone needs these kind of learning experiences because, yeah, it's nice to to really realize. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it definitely is representative of the human experience. Mm. And this, and then we look the whole time. These uh, these two crows, which you thought might have turned in him, never they've actually kind of got Rick's back. Right. Why do you think that is? I'm actually not sure. Maybe the may, I think maybe these crows because they're already so smart. I think the crows because you. I think it goes back to the moment where <laughs> I'll just pause it for a second. <laughs> I think it goes back to when the crows were in the cave and they chose empathy. Right. And so I think because the crows have a time to get to know Rick compared to these other crows, I think they realize that Rick's just a better person than these than these than these crow overlords. Because the crow overlords are smart as they are. Like they still, you know, when they're on Earth, they just turned everyone into the, they made the crows attack everyone. So I think they just realized that Rick's just a better person. Okay. And that's why they chose to, and that's why they chose to stick with him. But you want to okay. Now we have the real evil come out in this in, in Morty's sidekick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I did not expect what Morty was going to do. He really, man. This is this is like an evo- Morty has evolved. He would n- not yeah, self-sacrifice himself and go through so much pain to free himself. This yeah. is the moment. Like, yeah, this is this is such a good scene. I can't have you connect to me if you're not on my side. What's his name? Uh, that means I got to kill you. I- and, and Morty's like, he stands up for himself. Yeah. That's like cat. That's development. Oh yeah, I just I didn't expect him to do this, but like, yeah, he just makes. Do you reckon that guy died? Yeah, I think he just so disappeared he, into the ether. Yeah, just just gone. And Morty oh. just cauterizing his uh, yeah. his torn off oh. hand. Like that's a bold move, Morty Smith. I'm amazed he's not passed out. That's so much pain. Morty has been through a lot. Hmm. And at this little, this little like cheeky line. Lucky for me, abandonment is my bread and butter. A reference to him like abandoning yeah. his his daughter. Yep. And now this is the part where yep he had the things ready to go, and yeah, the crows helped him out. They self sacrificed themselves. Hmm. And this is an important moment because this kind of sets up the scene for what's going to happen later in the episode with Rick going his own way. Yeah. Uh, he's realizing I have this toxic thing I have with Morty doesn't define us. Um, man, crows are empathetic as fuck. Okay. <laughs> and I think it's this realization of empathy. Yeah. And he comes back. Morty's obviously had the one of the toughest days. He gets his hand back. I was kind of hoping Morty would get like a cool robot hand or something, and that could be like it's kind of like an adventure time when Finn loses his hand and becomes like a, like a permanent grass change. hand, and he keeps it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I like that sort of stuff. But you know what? I was like, for animation's sake, let's just keep him having the same hand for easy. Oh, or even what's in that other uh, that other show you showed me that was awesome on um, Netflix? Uh, the Cookie. Oh, the, Final Space. Final Space, man. Yeah, the guy gets. Yeah, exactly. So he gets a robot hand. Such a good show. Really good show. So Morty's like, all right, all right, we broke up. We, we kind of come back together. We rebounded. We're back together, right? And then... Mm. It never had a moment like this in this in this series mm. where Rick is so serious to be like, nah, man. Because you were afraid to tell me something. Yeah. Very like kind of mature acknowledgement. It's super, it's super mature, and it's very good from Rick to be like, "Look, I just don't think you should hang around me right now. Like, I'm not a good influence. I'm a bad partner. I never made you a true partner." Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, just to critique it, 
maybe because the length of the episode wasn't enough. I don't know if I really kind of buy, like, the crows giving him that, showing him that empathy. Like, I don't feel like there was a real big moment where he, like, to to feel that empathy and learn that lesson. I feel like it was pretty sudden um, and maybe could have been executed a little better. Yeah, I can agree with you there. Like, I can understand how the crows made him do that. But when I'm thinking about how, I'm just like, oh, I don't really have like a def- like a defining moment where they yeah get- yeah but okay whatever let's let's suspend disbelief he does he does have that moment hmm. i will never be the same see here's the thing if if a character is gonna actually i will never be the same you would expect something quite monumental to happen to them and i don't feel like that hmm. really happened this episode maybe to morty yes but to rick yeah, not really. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, not, yeah, to Morty, yeah, definitely more like he had to self-sacrifice a part of him. Um, He got betrayed. I don't know, maybe because they're crows and they're not actual like sentient, well, like sentient like human beings. Mm. I don't know. But maybe that's why Rick says he will never be the same because he's, he's started to realize a lot of the wrong that he's done. Mm. So I think that he's what he's talking about. And I think that's why he wants to hang out with the crew is because he wants to continue along that line of being just a better person. That's big. Big development. It really is. And, just kind of obsessed with crows now. And this is it. It's like breaking up, you're leaving, mm. never going to see this person again. Yeah. <laughs> Rick and Two Crows. I wouldn't mind like a spin-off version yeah. of Rick and Two Crows because obviously a bit of time passes between this and the next episode. So I would love a, a spin-off episode where it's just Rick and Two Crows. I would watch the fuck out of that. And oh, I, I, I didn't get the screenshots, but at the end, the, the garbage goober. He's the like, garbage we learned, goober? We learned he was a PhD <laughs> and... Uh... And the wife is just like, don't do it. Don't bring us up down. And the brand is like, trash, trash, trash. I love trash. Yum, yum, yum. And just like slowly creeping towards the like the trash thing. I don't even need oh. screenshots, man. That was perfect. <laughs> That's the episode, man. I think I, it was a good episode. I, 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 I really like the, the development and the... Uh, this the classic Rick and Morty plus some stakes, some actual like, okay, you got some things on the line. There's some progression within the development of the relationship of these characters, you know, some, yeah. So I, I did appreciate that. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed this episode. I think I enjoyed the next episode more, but this is still a really good episode. Like I enjoyed how there was a bit of fun in it with the crows. I enjoyed how there was character development, a lot of character development for Morty and Rick. Mm. And uh, that's ultimately what it was. Yeah. All right. I think that wraps up episode nine. We're going to come out with episode 10 pretty soon, which is, mm-hmm. I need to watch that one again. I need yeah, to. I'm the same. I, I'm pretty sure there's the, the big scene, if you know the scene I'm talking about. Yeah. I won't mention it, but like you have to keep pausing it to see exactly what happens and how that connects to everything. Like it's a powerful moment. It's a moment that we've all been waiting for, and it happens so quickly in so many frames. Absolutely. So, so I'm excited to divulge that. That's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the second last episode of Rick and Morty. We've done all the episodes of season five. You guys can go back and watch them. You know what it is, Jungle Beats. Also, bro, it kind of looks like that my head's a lot bigger than your head because you're further away from the <laughs> camera than me. Like, look, it's like you have a tiny head and I have a massive head. Hey. Hold on. Let me, let me go back. Big fucking eyes, but a nice fucking nice fish. Nice fucking fish. <laughs> there we go. Now we have like similar head proportions. Well, maybe you just have a giant head. Now I can't hear I you. I don't actually. I think I've got a narrow head. It's like, I yes. feel like my head, If like when I was born, it was like this. And then someone just got like clamps and was just like, and now I just have like a very, a very narrow head. I'm like pretty, I'm pretty oval. Yeah, you're a narrow oval. Yeah, I'm narrow. <laughs> you got any last thoughts, comments? Uh... Trees, lagoons, mm-hmm. uh, members, mm-hmm. veiny members, mm-hmm. big veiny members. Only. That's it. Only. You know what it is. Jungle Beats, subscribe, hit notifications, all links below if you guys can listen. 
review Donda if you don't know. Some people are listening, w- watching our like latest reviews and they're, and they're like, oh, you guys are back. Like this just shows me that the YouTube algorithm is all the way messed up. People are not seeing videos, they're not being notified. It's really a shame because you can have like, it doesn't even matter if you have 50,000 subscribers because half of them ain't even being notified. Not even half, like 90%. It's crazy. We've been out the game too long, man. <laughs> uh, it's true. That's a factor. That's a factor. Yeah, yeah. Look, man, we're back in our own way now. That's it. Jungle Beats. I'm Alexander Emmanuel Sandalis. I'm Thade Gray. What's up? And we'll catch you around soon. Thanks for tuning in. You're amazing. You are. Uh, I love you. And goodbye. Peace.